Okay, my friends, welcome back. Today we've got another in the series of my books that have been on my bookshelves for 50 or 60 years that have survived a few purges. Um, now, a question that has been asked of me over the years, and somebody actually asked it quite recently on the, on the comments uh, on, the, on the channel, is... You, know, you have all these books, you kind of read them all, what's the point of having them? So, my answer is always the same. Um, there's a distinction between collecting and reading. Uh, for me, reading's a byproduct of collecting, like opposite sides of the same coin, if you like. Um, collecting is all about uh, completism, uh, if, a, if a certain uh, title of book or publisher of book that is numbered, um, then I'll go for it. Uh, if it's um, of nostalgic value, I'll go for it. If there's a finite number of books that I'm interested in, I'll, I'll go for it. Uh, the completism and then the nostalgia comes in by, excuse me, I'll just adjust here, by um, collecting stuff from back when I was an avid collector. So, um, what's all that got to do with what I'm going to show you today? Well, I think, I, I think I'm correct in saying that all of these books I'm going to show you that I've never read. Um, I flicked through them, I've never read them. But because of my interest in Comic, I've always loved comics ever since I was oh, eight years old. Um, with my love of comics and of paperbacks, I decided to uh, to collect these. Um, now, we're looking today at stuff from the 60s and 70s. There, there were an awful lot of um, comic-related paperbacks published in the 80s, but I'd, I'd moved away from uh, collecting uh, by then or collecting science fiction and comic related. Um, so I, I don't have any of those. So these are all Marvel and DC uh, and EC, the old EC comics from the 50s. Um, and and, that, and that, that's, that's, uh, that's all, all, all that's there. Um, as I say, there's loads published after that, but I never got around to them. So that's what we sh we're having to look at today. So let's get started. Um, right now, Foursquare in this country did, did a lot of books. Um, Superman there. That one. Um, that one's in black and white. Um, as stories from the early, earlier Superman books from. 50, 50, 50, late 50s and the early 60s and this is a first from 1967 that's that one alright and we had Batman now these these sort of arrived around about the same time as that horrible uh, camp TV program I mean, a lot of people love it I hate it um, but that's where these uh, grew in pop, pop, uh, popularity from again it's in um, it's in black and white and it's got the earlier stuff from that's from the 30s for instance um, <clears throat> and uh, that was the first of a few Batman that they did um, there was Batman versus the Joker again black and white uh, earlier stories. Uh, there are only, <coughs> only five of these, and I have them all. They were they were printed in America, but um, I think I don't know if there was half a dozen of them, but that's certainly all we had um, over here. Batman versus the Penguin, and uh, now these. These couple here are, well, as you can see, from the from the uh, nineteen 
60s uh, TV series straight from but these actually are um, pro stories um, based upon the char Batman characters of course and that was the other one so yeah that was um, that was all the four square DCs I don't think I'm missing too many if any but um, I'm not an expert so I might be right then Foursquare also did a couple of Marvel books um, Hulk that was collector's album number one now these again were black and white printed sideways um, again these are from 67, 1967, well 66 actually, so that was the Hulk and then as far as I know there were only two of these collector's albums uh, printed, published I mean, that was Mighty Thor, again, Black and white. These are quite nice copies, actually. In in this country, obviously, there being English publications, there they're easy to find than um, than the American editions of, of certain American editions of of um, <coughs> comic related, but um, they're not um, in abundance and they're not sort of overly cheap. So, um, but. You know, if anybody was to start a collection, it wouldn't cost them the earth. Right now, Lancer Books in America did a few. I don't have them all. Uh, but that's the um, Amazing Spider-Man Collector's Edition. Um, that was from 1960. Sorry, it's the second printing, that one from 1966. And again, black and white in horizontal format. And then they did Fantastic Four. Shame about the pen up there, but there's nothing you can do to get rid of that as far as I know. Um, so you just stuck with it, but there you go, what can you do? And the other one I have in that series is Daredevil. Again, um, slightly darker print in that one. Um, and that will be from around about the same, the same period. Right, now... Um, Wyndham Books did some um, Marvel stuff. Uh, these are in colour, these ones, and they were obviously British. Distributed over here. Um, that's the Incredible Hulk. Now these were in colour, but they were very, very small. Quite uh, tricky to read, I would imagine. Uh, in fact, with my eyes, I wouldn't even attempt it. So, yep, yeah. that was the Incredible Hulk. And they did a Fantastic Four. I don't, uh, I don't have all of these. Um, I'm missing a few. Uh, but um, I, have, I have five of them. So I'm sure there were more. Again, um, same format, very small panels. So maybe a magnifying glass needed there. I have to say that one, um, that one is in remarkably good condition for its age. You know, we're talking, f what, 60 years <laughs> almost. 
and uh, the pages are, are fairly white too so mm -hmm. a copy you know a copy of that quality might cost you a little bit more and then this is very much the same uh, it's a lovely copy now <clears throat> this is one of my favorites because it's got the um it's got the steve dicko dr strange from strange tales uh, the very first appearance of Doctor Strange in Strange Tales, and the art the artwork is just crazy, man. It's <laughs> everybody thought he might have been on on drugs um, when he he drew them, but um, there is some um, there's some weird and wonderful stuff in there, I have to say. Like really trippy and psychedelic, but um, yeah, that's a, that's a nice one to have. I think um, I think there was another Doctor Strange uh, which I've never never seen about, and then they did a, a few. I, I don't know if I, I think they might have done more than three, but I've only got the first three of the Spider-Man series. That's number one. Same format, again, very, very nice copy. I think, uh, I think I must have bought these brand new. I mean, a, lot, a lot of these were bought second hand um, back in the 60s, but um, I think those I must have bought from an import shop because they're all in absolutely mint, well, near mint condition. Um, it's hard to call things mint when they're that old, you know, the pages are a little bit off colour but not much. And that's, um, that's falling into... Okay, and this is actually an American pocketbooks version, number three. Um, exactly the same format. Um, that's got a twenty p sticker on, so it must have been second hand that one. But again, that's just the other two. Not in bad shape at all. Right now, the, these next two are Marvel related, um, but they are pros stories um now of all these i showed you these are probably the the hardest to find i mean that one's not not as good a shape as the ones i've just shown you but as I say they're not that easy in this country at least and these were published by banton bottom there um i don't think there's a credit Oh, this was very nice now. These were 1967. And according to the price inside, that cost me 4p. Uh, what's that these days? <laughs> so I must have bought that um, after the event. Even though it's dated 67, I must have bought that in the 70s. Early 70s, that is. And then this one is quite um, quite scarce, that one. Captain America, the great gold steel. It's a lovely cover, but there again, I don't know who did it. But it's, um, <clears throat> it's a very nice copy. So something in that condition, you know, would be, would be quite expensive because they are American publications. And that one's from 1968 with no artist oh, credit, sadly. Um, so say these, these two are just pros. So that's, um, that's a little lot. I'll just uh, get rid of those. Right. Now, the next little lot. Um, are, well, 
Oh, no, these are not these. Um, these are from seventy-three first printing, and it's tales from House of Mystery again. It's um, it's prose, but uh, Bernie writes and cover look at that beautiful cover. Bernie Wrightson's one of my all-time favourite <coughs> artists. You know, he did a wonderful job with, <coughs> excuse me, with uh, Swamp Thing, of course. And that was the second one. There's only two of these. Now again, it's um, slowly work. Wrightson's style was somehow suited to horror. Although he did a lot of superhero stuff, um, did the shadow, which is one I particularly like, or he, he inked the shadow, I should say. Um, then the next few I'm going to show you are from um, comic strips from the from the 1950s EC comics, and they're all published by by Ballantine. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, So there was Tales from the Crypt. I only have four out of the five. Um, there was a companion volume to this called A Vault of Horror, I believe. Um, but uh, that's a Frank Rosetta cover. And as I say, these are strips from the 19, 1950s. Famous EC comics. Um, these were actually published in this is a third printing from 1965. Then we have Ray Bradbury's The Autumn People. Quite scarce in this country, that one. That's um, Again, it's a Frazetta cover. Be a nice shape, apart from a little crease there, but that's on the back cover. So no worries there. That, that is just uh, adaptations of all of Ray Bradbury stories that appeared in EC Comics, and there were quite a few actually. But of course, there was a uh, there was a Bradbury. Um, anthology called that as well prose anthology and then it's the other Ray Bradbury one oh, Midnight that one's in okay shape certainly not as good as the others um, there again it's a set of cover not one of his best, I have to say, um, as opposed to this one, which I like very much. Great colour. Maybe it's so small, but yeah, super stuff. Um, that one is absolutely mint condition and not so easy to find. And that one was from first Ballantyne 1965, so these are quite early, these ones. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, sure if the interior art on these was Strips, and then there was a little um, little drawing on the title page. It might be Bernie Wrights, and that's me. But there again, it could be for Zander. It probably was. When I think about it, right now this is um, something completely different. That's the Spirit Case book now. Spirit was um, an old uh, newspaper strip, it started out as, 
<clears throat> by the great Will Eisner. I mean, one of the one of the comic greats, one of the legends. Um, that's his uh, painting on the front of the cover there. I, th I think there were probably a few of these, but it, it, it's an American tempo book and it's in very nice condition. But it, um, it's the only one I, I managed to find at the time. Um, I'm not sure where these strips came from, actually. Um, look as if they might be original, but... Um, yeah, not sure about that one, but it's, it's, it's an interesting one. And then this one, <laughs> it always makes me laugh. <laughs> High camp superheroes. Uh, these were old, old Tower Comics uh, reprints. Um, yeah, it's not in bad, Nick. Um, it's a Belmont book, American, obviously. And that was from the first print here, 66. And again, it was a horizontal black and white. We've got steel sterling, apparently, and the web. I like that the little quote at the bottom there. Some will say this book is so bad it's great. <laughs> Yeah, makes me laugh. So that's um, those then. We have this um, book about comics, uh, the older comics, like uh, Overlook, uh, Oversee of um, various comics from the, from the early days. All in, well, all in colour for a dime tells you something but it's got a very nice um, very nice cover gallery in the middle which are all in colour um, well actually it's worth it's worth having just for those old covers it's an iconic one all star comics the first first justice society of America I believe right and then um, that's a very nice Green Lantern, Green Arrow reprints. Uh, famously, this was um, this was Neil Adams' contribution to uh, comic books greatness. Um, of course, there was a there was a controversial story. It's not reprinted in either of those these books about drugs. Um, I think there were a lot of social issues involved <coughs> in his run on this particular book. This is a paperback library book from the States. Uh, they're not, you know, they're not so hard to find, but <coughs> they're certainly worth looking for. And that's the second book. Yeah. But they didn't carry on because... Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, the drug, the drug story would have been interesting, but maybe it wouldn't have made it. I don't know if it was censored at the time it was printed by DC, but um, there was a lot of hoo-ha surrounding it at the time. Right, now we have three books by uh, the great Gil Kane. Black Mark. I mean, Gil Kane's another great artist. He's renowned for his dynamic pose. I mean, you can't get much better than that, can you? Lovely cover. And uh, Gil Kane did an awful lot of comics work. Um, and I think these were reprinted later on in magazine size, the Black Mark stories. But, um, yeah, pure sword and sorcery, that one. And that was by by Bantam Books and it arrived in 1971 so a little bit later and 
then. First volume of the Starhawks by Kane. Obviously straight science fiction, that one, Space Adventures of the of the Future, that's more traditional. The uh, top artist. And we have number two. Same again. These were from first tempo printing, July eighty one. So that was towards the end of um, my interest in science fiction for a while and comics. But I've always had a soft spot for them. Now this, these next few I'm going to show you are not, are not. There's an argument to say they're not really comics related, and there's an argument to say they they are. Um, because they are <coughs> pro stories, they're new pro pops, sorry, new pro stories, and, and then that, they're called the New American Pulp. Um, but the argument on the other side is they are comic related because they're done by uh, well known comic creators. So, you know, take it whichever you want. But I just wanted to show you them because it's a nice little set of books and it's. Um, Weird Heroes, and you can see the contributors there, stellar lineup. This is exactly what it says, you know, New American Pulp, just stories, um, pro stories, similar to the old pulp stories of the 30s and 40s. That's a nice Storenko cover on that one. And there was volume two. Stranko cover there. That's, as you can see, a wide variety of great artists and writers there. <clears throat> and the format changed, the delivery changed, sadly. Because I like them. Those two. Um, that's Alex Nino, I believe. It doesn't give you, doesn't give you, yeah, it is, and it's a, it's a novel by Ron Goulart, illustrated by Alex Nino. So there's the comic connection, Alex Nino, and did a lot of black and white work for Warren, and indeed Marvel. There we go with Light Shader. I think that's Paul Galacy. Seem to recognise his his artwork there. Let's see. Yeah, well, it didn't. Yeah, um, no, it didn't actually say. I'll tell you inside. No. It's annoying how they don't credit artists in in these books. Um, these are from the the mid seventies, by the way. Oh no, I'm wrong. It's it's, it's Ralph Reese does give a artist credit. Ralph Reese, I'm not so familiar. It looks like Galacy, but it isn't. And that is um, a novel by Meacham and King, illustrated by Rudy Nebrez, which is I think another one of the Spanish artists um, who worked uh, for the black and white magazines. And we have number five, something counter. I know, I know that one, that's Jeff Jones. I love him as well. Doc Phoenix. Um, graphics by Stephen Fabian, who was also a very, very good writer. And we have volume six. I'm sure about that one. Volume seven. You again, I think, and finally, volume eight. Finished it. That's how we take it, I would guess. Um, and this was an unofficial number nine. Um, it had reprints of stories that appeared in, uh, I think, three of those volumes I've just showed you. Yeah, so there we are. A look at uh, comic related. 
um, books from the 60s, 70s. Hope you enjoyed that. And I'll be back with something, hopefully, very soon. Bye-bye now.